Hey, what's happening YouTube? My name is Lee Brandt. I'm a developer advocate at Okta. Today we're going to look at using the built-in OIDC middleware and ASP.NET Core 3.0 to connect to Okta for identity management. Let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is scaffold your .NET application. Assuming you have the .NET Core 3.0 or 3.1 SDK installed, we'll just use the .NET command line, .NET new MVC, and we'll give it a name, OIDC ASP.NET Core. Now, all these commands I'm running, I'm running on Linux. Doesn't make any difference. All the commands are the same, no matter what platform you're running on. Also, I'll be using Visual Studio Code. Again, it doesn't matter. If you're using Visual Studio proper, Visual Studio 2019 or Visual Studio 2019 uh, Community Edition, something like that, um, there are some things you won't have to do, like setting up the VS Code folder, but everything else should be exactly the same. So let's go ahead and scaffold the application, and you'll see it scaffold the application and then run a restore to get all the NuGet packages that it needs. Now all I need to do is just change directories into that directory where I just created that new application. And for me, since I'm using Visual Studio Code, I can just run code and dot. So the first time you run this app in uh, Visual Studio Code, and this is something that you people using Visual Studio proper, Visual Studio 2019, won't need to do. Um, but for Visual Studio Code users, you probably get something like this in the bottom right hand corner that says there are required assets to build and debug this and they're missing. Do you want to install them? Just go ahead and say yes and it'll create this VS Code folder and that's basically just a launch JSON and a tasks JSON that helps you with uh, starting up the application and attaching a debugger and all that good stuff. So that being said, let's go ahead and run F5 and uh, see what this, hit the F5 button and we'll see what this does when it all runs. Okay, so when you run your app, you'll see that it's a pretty simple app. There's just a home page and a privacy page. Nothing super new to see here. Um, if you haven't done anything with .NET Core, say a pass like 2.1, um, the uh, base app may look a little different, a whole lot simpler, which is better for us. Um, let's go ahead and uh, add our application. Okay, to use Okta as your identity provider, you'll need a developer account. Developer accounts are free. They'll always be free. Just go to developer.octa.com, click on sign up, and fill in the information. It's fairly simple, just email, first name, last name. Once you've created an account and logged in, you'll be taken to this dashboard here. You'll want to click on Applications at the top, and we're going to want to click on Add a New Application. Choose Web. Um, we've got native apps or single page apps or APIs. Um, you're going to want to choose the web app and you'll actually see it says here dot, .NET for .NET and Java apps, your basic server side web apps. So <clears throat> we'll call it something simple like OIDC example. Uh, you'll notice our application was running on port 5001. So let's go ahead and put it on port 5001. We'll also change this to port 5001 and the actually the uh, URL is actually sign in OIDC. So it's sign in dash OIDC. So it's our local host and actually these are always all going to be running on HTTPS locally. So we'll make these HTTPS. Everything else can remain the same. We're going to be using the authorization code flow. So when you click done, You'll be taken to a page where uh, you've got the general settings, everything we just set, and you'll have a client ID and a client secret. The other thing you're going to want to set up is you're going to want to add groups to your outgoing token. So if you come over here to authorization servers, you'll notice that there's a default one that's been created for you. So we're just going to go ahead and use that one. Um, we're going to add claims, and you'll see I've already had groups added from previous applications that are using the same authorization server. Um, but let's assume that they're not. So we'll go ahead and add a claim and we'll call it groups. We're going to want to add it to the ID token always. 
we're going to use the value type of groups. So basically, it's just going to pull out the groups. And then you can save what groups you want added to the ID token. Ones that start with something, ones that equal something. We're just going to do matches regex and do a dot star. That's so that all groups actually get, get added to it. And we want it for any scope that's asked for. So <clears throat> now we've got our groups added to the ID token going out. And now we just need to go back and configure our uh, ASP.NET application to use them. Now that your Okta application is set up, you need to configure the ASP.NET application to use Okta. So the first thing you need to do is set some configuration. So you go into appsettings.development.json, that file in your ASP.NET Core application. And we're just going to add some values to this JSON file. Okta is the section that we're talking about. We need a client ID, a client secret, the Okta domain, or the Okta domain, and uh, the post logout redirect URL, which is already set. It's going to be localhost 5001. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> now we need to go back to Okta. And <clears throat> your Okta org will actually be, the org URL will be right here on your dashboard the very top right hand corner. So we'll just cut and paste that over here into the Okta domain. Then we'll go into applications and we'll find that OIDC example application. We'll go to the general settings and we'll scroll down to the bottom and we'll get the client ID and client secret from there. Client ID. Client secret. Save that. Now that we've got your Okta configuration into your ASP.NET application, let's show your ASP.NET application how to use it with the OIDC middleware. To configure your application to now talk to Okta with those uh, configuration values that we just set up, we'll go into startup.cs. And actually, one of the first things we need to do is come back over here to the command line, and we're going to need to add a package. We're going to run .NET add package, and the package we're going to add is the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core, uh, ASP.NET Core dot authentication dot OpenID Connect application, or the package. Um, the version we're going to use is 3.0. So let's just go ahead and add that package to the application. And then we'll come back to the application, and in the configure services method of your startup CS, we're going to add some values. This nice big chunk of code here, so you don't have to watch me type it. I'm just going to cut and paste it on in there. So. We're going to, basically what we're doing is we're adding authentication, we're adding cookies, we're adding OpenID Connect, and we're adding authorization. Now there's some, um, some using con directives that you'll need to add as well. You can either use control dot and find it. It's Microsoft ASP.NET Core authentication cookies that comes from that package that we just installed. Or we'll just go ahead and put them up here so I can show you all four of them that you're going to need. That's authentication cookies, authentication OpenID Connect. You also need the identity models protocols OpenID Connect and the identity models for tokens. Okay, so the options that are going to go into the add authentication call are the default scheme and the default challenge scheme. Now the default scheme is going to be our co cookie authentication defaults authentication scheme. And <clears throat> the default challenge scheme is going to be OpenID Connect defaults authentication scheme because we want to use OpenID Connect as our authentication scheme and we want to save a cookie, a session cookie. So we add cookies so that we can do that and then we're going to add OpenID Connect and it needs some options as well. And this is where we're going to read up those configuration values. So you're going to set the sign-in scheme to the cookie authentication scheme. We're going to set the authority or the authorization server that we're going to be using um, to octa domain slash oauth2 default. Now, 
<clears throat> we get that from looking at Okta. And if I go into my uh, API authorization servers, remember this is where we set up the groups. The default authorization server that was set up for us actually has that URL as its URL, which is whatever your domain is, slash OAuth2 slash default. So that's why the OAuth2 default is there on the end. We want to be able to talk over HTTPS, so we set that to true. We set in the client ID and the client secret. We set the response type to code because we're going to be using the authorization code grant type. We want to get the claims from the user info endpoint, which means that once the authentication has actually happened, it'll get the claims from the user info, info endpoint and create the token with it. Um, the scopes that we want to add are OpenID and profile scope so that it gets name and email address and that sort of thing. Uh, we want to save the tokens once we get them. And we're going to set some token validation parameters. The last one is where we validate the issuer. So once we've got a token back, we want to validate that the issuer is who we thought it was going to be. <clears throat> These two are super helpful in the fact that in the ID token coming from, back from Okta, the name of the user is actually in a thing called, uh, in a JSON document, the JSON web token is keyed with name lowercase n. And same thing with the, the roles. We want to map groups to roles, so we just tell it that the role claim type comes from this key in this JSON document called groups. So when it goes and gets the claims, it's going to say, oh, here's groups, that goes in roles. Okay? Uh, and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add the authorization service. The last thing we need to do is come down here to where it says use authorization. And right above that, we're just going to add an app, use authentication. So that way it'll use the, so we set up add authorization here and use authorization was already there. We set up add authentication up here and then we want to tell the application that we actually want to use the authentication that we just configured. Now that we configured all this, now we got to set up a little bit more to make this actually to kick off an, a login. Okay, so now that we've got this set up, there's really only two pieces we need left uh, because basically our application is set up to use OIDC for authentication, and it's set up to use Okta as our identi identity provider for OIDC. But we haven't actually put any UI elements in there or told the application how to kind of kick off um, a login, right? So let's create a controller here, and we'll call this controller account controller. Now, I'm just gonna cut and paste a couple of chunks of code in here just to keep you from having to watch me type it. The first one being the body of the actual controller. Now I'm gonna need a couple of using statements in here. For me, I can just do control dot. I think it works the same way in Visual Studio proper. And, Uh, yep, Open ID Connect is the one we want, and then this one should be the cookies, authentication cookies. Yeah, so we brought in ASP.NET Core Authentication Cookies, uh, Authentication Open ID Connect, and ASP.NET Core MVC for the controller. So, now that we've got this all set up, we've got a login and a logout action. Now the login action just checks to see if there's somebody already logged in. If there is, it just redirects them back to the home page. If there isn't, then it returns a challenge. And this challenge is actually an OpenID Connect default uh, authentication scheme challenge. Same with a logout. Once they click to log out, it's just going to return a sign out result that passes the authentication scheme, the OpenID Connect default authentication scheme, and the cookie default authentication scheme. So, even though we've now got an account controller, we just need a piece, couple of pieces of UI to be able to actually call this account controller. So we're coming over here into the shared folder, 
we create a new file here and we'll call it underscore login partial dot CSHTML. Now this chunk of code is just a CSHTML partial and it just checks to see if there is a um, identity, if there is an authenticated user logged in. If there is, then it's just going to go ahead and show hello, whatever your name is. And remember, we're, this identity dot name with an uppercase N, we actually got from the claim type of lowercase N from the, from the ID token. Um, then we're also going to show them a log out button if they're logged in. This is just a form that's kicked off because that's how log out needs to happen is with a form submission. So we just create like this empty form and a submit button for that form. Okay. Um, and this is just an easy way to make it um, like a link instead of being like a fancy square HTML button. Now, <clears throat> if they aren't logged in, if there isn't anybody logged in, then we just want to show a login link. Okay. So we'll go ahead and save that. And now we just need to put it in our layout. So if we come over here to our layout, CSHTML, and we'll see we've got this navbar collapse inside here. And we'll just replace that whole section. And I'll show you why. Because really we're only adding one, one thing. But we're just adding the partial, but there are a couple of things that changed here, right? So we actually changed this to justify content between. This will give us the same menu that we normally have on that left hand side with the home and the privacy dock, but on the right hand side, we'll have our login thing. So this justify content between just pushes those two, those two apart so that that login partial leads from this, from the right hand side, and the regular menu leads from the left hand side. Just makes it a little bit prettier. Now, if we've done everything correct, fingers crossed, we should be able to F5 and run this application and see it in action. Now there is one other thing we need to set up before this will work completely. And so if we go back to our application again, we just click on applications from our dashboard and we'll find the application here, OIDC example, go to the general tab. One of the things we didn't set was a logout redirect URI, where we want the application redirecting back to once they log out. And in this case, it's going to be HTTPS localhost 5001 sign out dash callback dash OIDC. This is a standard thing. Again, this sign in OIDC and sign out callback OIDC are part of the OIDC middleware. They handle those routes for you. So you just need to know that that's what the, that's what the routes are that it's looking for. So we go ahead and save that. And now when we go back, if we go back to our application, we should be able to fire this guy up and get him running. So if we hit F5, run the application. Then when we go to click login, you'll see that it actually didn't take us to a login page. It's kind of weird, but really what, what happened was you were already logged in. Since you're logged in over, if you're like me, you're logged in in another tab. Um, so since they're both in the Okta domain and your, your domain here, then it's, it gets shared. So one of the things that you can do is you can come over here and just click log out. That way, at least you can ch check that functionality. So the log out is actually working because now we see login. And if I actually come over here and try and do something like go to the applications list, it'll make me log in again because I logged out of my session with Okta because I just happened to be logging in with, with this particular user. So if I open up my application now and click login, It'll take me to a login page that's just like this. And I'll log in with my base credentials for that app for that one user. Um, if you didn't create a user, it created one for you when you signed up. 
Um, and that just happens to be the email that I signed up with and that admin username and password. So that's a good way to, to test things. So now I've got my login and my logout working. Let's go see how we can use those groups to do some authorization. Okay, so now we have authentication working. Um, let's go ahead and make sure that authorization is working. We have it set up, or at least we have the groups mapped to roles, right? Because in our startup CS, we said that our role claim type is actually called groups. So those groups are gonna get mapped to roles for us. So I now should be able to come into the home controller, for instance, and I can just create a couple of actions that I can test out to see if I can get to those things. So I'm gonna create an everyone action because I know I'm in the everyone group. By default, when you create an app, everyone that's in the everyone group gets added to the application. So I know I'm in the everyone group. There should be a group that I'm not part of though. Um, and it really doesn't matter what this one's called. But if you know me, you know I'm not in the dancers group. So let's create a dancers route that only dancers, people in the role of dancers, can actually get to that route. Now, um, we're, let's go ahead and create a couple of UI pieces too. So if I go over here to Home Shared and Layout, um, I can actually create a couple of nav items to be able to make it a little easier to get to these things. So here's our nav item for the everyone action and we'll create one more for the dancers action home dancers and we know that our home controller is saying just return the views for those so let's go over to our home view and we'll add a new file that is everyone HTML. Okay, and it says this is the everyone page. And we'll create another one for the dancers as well. And this is the dancers page. Now remember, I shouldn't be able to get to this one. So if I go ahead and fire this guy up, should be able to see that I can get to the everyone page and I can't get to the dancers page. So I fired up my application and I'm in, I'm logged into the application and I have my everyone and my dancers menu items here at the top. Now when I go to everyone, I should be automatically taking that this is the everyone page because I'm in that group. But when I click on dancers, I should be taken to a, an account access denied and a return to the home dancers. So what I can do <clears throat> is create this account access denied route and redirect it to do a challenge for login for access denied routes on the account controller. Or I can handle it in some other way. Uh, maybe I don't want them to log in. Maybe I just want to take them to a page that says you're not allowed to access this page. Something's a little bit prettier than this, right? <clears throat> so now we've seen that with just a little bit of code, we can get OIDC hooked up, use Auth Okta for authentication and authorization, mapping those groups over to the roles, and you're all set to go. Now you can just continue building your app and adding features that get you more customers. Thanks for joining me today. Check out our other um, great content here on YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you get notified when we get new cool content coming out. And we'll see you next time.